What gets you down? Maybe it's getting benched for most of your soccer match or a bad grade on that test you studied so hard for. It might be a fight with your best friend. Yeah, well, you're one too. Or when you find out your family can't take a trip to the beach this summer. Maybe it gets you down when everyone else wins a gazillion end of school awards and you get none. We all get knocked down sometimes and it's tempting to just stay there. After all, getting up is risky. There are no guarantees you won't fall down again. But God promises you don't have to do this alone. He's right there to take your hand and help you up. He's ready to walk beside you. He's going to lead you. And if you do get knocked flat again, God still loves you. He still has an amazing story for you to tell. And he'll give you strength to start again. When you get right back up after something gets you down, others can see God at work in you. That's why choosing resilience is an amazing way to worship God with your life. Because worship is about more than just singing loud. It's all about living loud. It's hard. That doesn't mean we should give up. When the going gets tough and I want to give up, I will trust in you. Cause you're always gonna lead, always gonna lead, always gonna lead me through. When I'm feeling overwhelmed and almost want to quit, I will not give in. Cause you're giving me strength, giving me strength, the strength to start again. Have you ever been on an obstacle course? It's like a maze of challenges designed to help you jump higher, think faster, and get stronger. But to get to the end of the obstacle course, you've got to have resilience. Resilience is getting back up when something gets you down. So if you happen to get knocked over, it, oh, it doesn't have to be the end of the race. You can get back up and keep going. Every obstacle course is different, but you'll probably need to know how to climb. You'll need balance. 
you'll need to know how to get through the tight spots. And when an obstacle gives you trouble, you'll need to learn how to bounce back. There's a good chance you're going to face some obstacles in your life. In fact, sometimes life itself can feel like an obstacle course. But as you'll learn in today's story, you won't have to tackle these obstacles all on your own. So when you do get knocked over, oh, okay, who is doing that? That's the end of it. <laughs> but seriously, who was doing it? The Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how He created us and loves us so much that He made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Matthew, chapter 28, and the book of Acts, chapters 1 and 2. Imagine that you are one of Jesus' closest friends, and three years ago, he invited you, you, to join him. Come, follow me. For three years, you followed Jesus from village to city to countryside as he teaches. You are the light of the world encourages. Blessed are those who are sad. They will be comforted. And heals. Get up, take your mat and go home. You know that Jesus is no ordinary rabbi. He's been sent by God. You are the Messiah. You are the son of the living God. Soon, you think Jesus will reveal who he really is to everyone. Maybe he'll even lead a revolt against the Romans. With Jesus in charge, anything could happen. Blessed, Blessed is, is the, the one who comes, comes in the name of the Lord. Lord. But then, during the Passover week, things get dark. The rumbling threats from the religious leaders become real. One of Jesus' followers, Judas, betrays him to the leaders for a handful of silver. Jesus is arrested. He's given a fake trial, sentenced to death, nailed to a rough wooden cross, and then, he dies. It's the darkest moment ever. It feels as if all the air has been slammed from your body. You don't know how to take another breath. You have no idea how you'll ever get back up. That's exactly what it was like for Jesus' disciples. His death knocked them flat, and they couldn't imagine how things could ever get better. But even in the darkest, downest moment, God was still present. God was still at work. And at the perfect moment in time, God raised Jesus from the dead. Don't be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee. There they will see me. Over 40 days, Jesus appeared to around 500 of his friends. He walked with them, ate with them, talked with them, at one meal, he told them, Do not leave Jerusalem. Wait for the gift my father promised. In a few days, you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. At last, Jesus' friends met him in Galilee, where it had all started three years before. Jesus! Peter and Jesus' other followers were so overwhelmed with amazement and joy at his presence that they fell down and worshipped him. Jesus came close and smiled at them. All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. So you must go and make disciples of all nations. Baptize them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Teach them to obey everything I have commanded you. And you can be sure that I am always with you to the very end. The job Jesus had given his friends seemed impossible, except for one thing. He promised he would be with them right by their side forever. He told them, You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. Then you will tell people about me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and from one end of the earth to the other. Then, right before the eyes of his friends, Jesus rose up into heaven. They stared amazed and confused. Men of Galilee, why do you stand here looking at the sky? Jesus has been taken away from you into heaven. 
but he will come back in the same way you saw him go. How can Jesus be with us when he's gone? What about this Holy Spirit? Jesus' friends were filled with questions. Not only did Jesus expect them to get back up, he'd given them a giant job. He wants us to tell the whole world about him. My head is spinning. Jesus' friends waited for him in Jerusalem, just as he had told them. And within a short time, they discovered how Jesus would give them his power. The Holy Spirit came to rest on their heads like tongues of fire. As the Spirit filled them, many were able to start speaking and understanding languages they hadn't known before. Wait, you're speaking like an Egyptian. But all I said was, would you like a cookie? In the language of the Egyptian. <gasps> it's the power of God's Spirit. We can speak to everyone now. Jerusalem was filled with believing Jews from many nations who had traveled to Jerusalem for the festival of Pentecost, and they spoke many languages. Fellow Israelites, listen to this. Peter addressed the crowd. The other Jesus followers shared his words in every language. Jesus of Nazareth was a man who had God's approval. God did miracles, wonders, and signs among you through Jesus. With the help of evil people, you put Jesus to death. But God raised him from the dead. God has made him both Lord and Messiah. What should we do? Turn away from your sins and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then your sins will be forgiven. You will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. I'm ready. Me too. Me three. God's Spirit was so powerful in the followers of Jesus that 3,000 people believed in Jesus and were baptized that day. Wow, <laughs> this is really happening. People will try to stop us. The religious leaders hate even the name of Jesus. But whatever happens, Jesus is with us. We can get back up, keep going. That sounds like a bottom line. Through the power of God's Spirit, the early church in Jerusalem grew quickly. The believers shared their lives. They studied and worshiped and ate together. And their fierce joy continued to draw people to Jesus. Though their challenges were just beginning, the believers knew that the power of God's Spirit could carry them through anything. When Jesus was on the earth, he gave his disciples a mission. He told them, go and make disciples of all nations. All nations! That would have seemed like an impossible mission. But Jesus also gave his disciples a promise. He said, you can be sure that I'm always with you to the very end. So the disciples knew they wouldn't have to face their impossible mission alone. Sometimes for you, and me, life can seem impossible. But guess what? God is always with us too. When you're trying really hard to get something done, <laughs> God is with you. When you feel like every step you take has to be perfect, God is with you. <laughs> when you're worried about school, when something bad happens out of your control, when you don't know what's going to happen next, God is with you. That's the one thing to remember today. God is always with you. That doesn't mean you won't have to face any obstacles, but it does mean that you won't be alone when you do. Ha! Not this time. I got you. <laughs> resilience, bounce back. That's resilience right there. I'll see you next time. Bring it! Bring it. Oh.